Hello and welcome to the podcast. This is a brand new podcast between the Parks Trust and the Open University. I'm Ellie Broad, the Community Engagement and Activity Coordinator for the Parks Trust, and I'm working on our National Lottery Heritage Fund project to reveal, revive and restore Great Linford Manor Park. One of our key aims in this project is to make the park more accessible to all and to provide engaging activity for older people, people living with dementia and their carers. One outcome of our project so far has been the establishment of the Five Ways Cafe, which is run out of St Andrew's Church, which is based in the park. Cafe attendees enjoy refreshments in a cafe setting and then set out on a gentle guided walk of the park led by volunteers. Until recently, when the coronavirus pandemic suspended the cafe sessions, researchers at the OU had been studying the cafe's walks and observing how attendees benefit from outdoor exercise. Here with me today is one of the OU research team who is heading up this project, which we like to call the walking program. Dr. Yitka Sajechkova is a senior lecturer with the Open University. So Yitka, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you came to be researching ageing at the OU? Hi Ellie, thank you. Yes, so I have always exercised in my life and after I finished my master's I became very interested in biomedical and psychosocial aspects of ageing and how these impact on falls in older age and also what is the role of postural stability in older people and what are mechanisms that contribute to that. So then naturally I researched how to keep good postural stability and what exercise suitable for people while aging is helping us to achieve this. And this is also kind of part of the Aging World Public Talks I've been doing in Milton Keynes and around and online for people who are interested in keeping well and maintaining good physical and mental health and well-being as they're aging. So that's, that's, that's part of the part of my research interests uh, at the OU as well. Sounds great and it's clear you're really passionate about your work and about helping the public understand how they can age well. So let's start from the beginning. Can you tell me how what happens when we age? So when we age, our metabolic processes slow down and it usually happens for gradually it doesn't happen at once apart from some of the hormonal changes around menopause for women of course so these changes are slowing down um, our basic metabolic processes and that's not just about processing food but it is linking to how all our organs and tissues function and slowing down means that at some point of this process our organs will not be performing at an optimal level anymore and we need to help our body to cope with aging or age related changes um, on our organs and tissues to perform as well as possible. So organs that do not perform at an optimal level further slow down in their function and cause changes, some of which are reversible for some time, but some of these are irreversible, which means that we can just write off a function or, or something. So. Um, this, it, we also cover this in the Aging World Public Talks and in the research I do at the OU. Uh, we often talk about the five pillars of aging well, which are nutrition, hydration, physical activity, social and cognitive stimulation. These are all very important. And if we are mindful of them, we have far better chances of keeping our organs and tissues performing at an optimal levels to slow down the aging processes because we cannot stop the aging. We can just slow it down and kind of prevent a steep decline, especially when, for example, suffering from a neurological, neurodegenerative condition such as dementia or type of dementia. It is fair to say that genetics plays a role, of course, as well, but we can't change much around that as we still don't know enough how exactly genetics works. So we may carry something we inherited from our predecessors in terms of some conditions, perhaps, that might be or may not be so likely to manifest during our lifespan. But the environment we live in and the decisions we're making throughout our lifespan are very important in how it affects our own aging. So it is not so much about what we genetically have, but what we actually decide to do with it and ideally being mindful of the five pillars of aging well. So you mentioned the five pillars. One of those is to keep moving. 
Um, why is this so important for older people and um, what kind of benefits have you seen in walking for older people? So exercise is amazing and for me it has always been one, one of the things that heals all. Uh, it helps us cope um, and keep and maintain our physical health. It helps us to keep and maintain our mental health and well-being. Um, of course, when we exercise reasonably uh, and not, we don't overdo it. But very specifically, exercise, when we exercise regularly, helps our blood to circulate a little faster through our body. And because blood carries nutrients and oxygen that all organs need to perform, uh, so when the blood is circu circulating well and regularly, our organs get in regular intervals uh, what they need to work at optimal levels, which slows down the aging processes a bit. Um, it has been also researched and confirmed how beneficial physical exercise is and one way that is suitable for most people is walking. So as we can all walk at a pace that suits us, walking is an activity that makes blood circulate well and as we breathe well uh, our blood carries good regular supplies of oxygen also to our brain and other organs which is incredibly important and it has a great preventive effect on on aging um, so exercise and especially walking has been found to be extremely beneficial and a fantastic preventive measure to use as we age especially if we suffer and or are afraid of suffering at some point in our life from a neurodegenerative condition such as a type of dementia, for example. So World Health Organization has in their guidelines around 150 minutes of exercise per week, at least. And this can be divided into seven days. So it doesn't have to be done at once, but it ideally would be divided between the days of the week. Um, it has also been found through research that walking six to nine miles a week has a preventive effect on our brains where we are afraid of being affected by a type of dementia or another neurodegenerative condition. So just because it is so amazingly stimulated and even more so if we're outdoors. Brilliant. That's very interesting. So, but why is it even better outdoors? is even better outdoors because outdoors is a great source of of course fresh air and oxygen which is so important but it is also so stimulating in in many different ways we see things we um engage with things we you see trees and suddenly between the trees you see a bed and then you see a meadow with flowers and you meet people you may meet people you may say hello you may ask how everybody is which might have been a bit more difficult during the lockdown but uh, we would still be able to greet people at a distance and seeing people meeting people seeing faces seeing their smiles seeing things around us makes our brain immensely engaged and it is an immensely stimulating activity so walking outdoors uh, is not only stimulating for body and um, due to the all blood cir circulation and oxygen carrying and nutrients and that's getting to all, all our organs and it, it's wonderful of course but but it is also this stimulation of of our brain because we see things that we engage with and that's brain stimulation so all this stimulation is 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 great and this this is this is why the the events you are organizing this is why these events are so great because they're not only prompting people to go outdoors and walk and engage with what is in the parks but it, it is also about the five ways cafe that that many stimulating encounters can, can happen so i wonder ellie you are the best person to actually tell tell more about that yeah, so as part of the project, we're doing lots of different things to try and make the park more accessible, uh, particularly for people with dementia and their carers and family. So primarily the thing we're trying to do is make Great Linford Manor Park more accessible in terms of for wheelchair users and to make the paths a bit more level and broadening them out a bit so people can access all areas of the park that they may have not been able to as it, as it is in its current state. Um, something else you want to do is bring in some trails around the park. So lots of parks that you'll visit have their own specific trails and we want to bring this into our park so 
One of these is going to be a mindfulness trail, which encourages users to take notice of the things that they see around them. So uh, things like spotting wildlife or feeling the texture of the trees. It really brings you into the present. Um, and it's, it's really good for the five, five ways of well-being, you know, taking notice and learning something new. It really fits well with those. We also have developed a dementia friendly spotter sheet for the park. So that uh, is, again, uh, fitting with the five ways to wellbeing initiative, um, focusing on the taking notice part. So there's things like, can you see somebody playing football? Can you feel the sun shining on your face? But it just encourages people, whatever, whatever, whether they've got dementia, whether they haven't, whether a child, whether an adult, uh, to just take notice of what's around them and really enjoy the park in the moment. Um, you mentioned the Five Ways Cafe, which has been running for quite, quite a long time now, I think nearly a year. Um, just before COVID, we were going to be starting to make it uh, twice monthly rather than once a month, which was just goes to show that it's been so beneficial for the people who attend. And it's really nice to be working with you on that so that we can see it, it's, it grow over time and get more as a sort of stable part of people's lives. And um, you see people come week on week and get to know the park a bit better and feel a bit more confident going around. So, yeah, it's really exciting. We've got lots of stuff planned. and. Uh, it's one of those projects where it just kind of evolves over time so new ideas will come through and we'll take feedback from lots of park users to see what they what they think about what we've been doing and how we can improve it so I'm really looking forward to getting stuck in but so when you're talking about people going out for a walk some people might find that challenging mightn't they so what why would people find a walk challenging uh, that's a million dollar question <laughs> <laughs> um, as humans, we may not always be so very keen to move, although we know how, how good and healthy and beneficial it is for us. Uh, for this reason, it's also that we have invented many technical uh, things and we progress technically so that we have cars and lifts and many other things that enable us all to get where we need to get. Um, but we need to be mindful that perhaps we don't need to be using them this so much for as long as we can walk up the stairs ourselves or get to the shops without using car or cars or buses because the the longer we keep moving about by ourselves the longer we will retain the functions the ability to do so so we need to use our physical abilities to keep them uh, otherwise we may start losing them as we grow older and this is not something we may be perceiving so um, steeply when we're around 40s and 50s but it's certainly something that comes comes to play and shows well when when we're around 60s 70s and 80s which is where we don't when we don't use what we have we we rather tend to lose it but the ways how we engage and why we come back to uh, exercise or walk somewhere is, 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 is a part of the research we've been actually doing. And it's part of the observations that we're doing in, in collaboration with you uh, and about the Five Ways Cafes and the guided walks, which is we're so interesting in into what are the barriers and facilitators. And in other words, in what um, challenges, hinders or facilitates people coming back to walk more, to engage more, to get stimulated more. Um, I have mentioned at some point how important regularity is. So uh, it, is, it, it is brilliant if we go somewhere every now and then, but the real benefits, the sustained benefits for our health, physical and mental health and well-being are um, where we do things regularly. So this is what as researchers were so very much interested about because understanding what brings people back to do more exercise and in this case the brilliant guided walking and, and, and engaging with the five ways cafes will help us to plan better for, for such events in the future maximizing the regular attendance because regularity is the key when it comes to the sustained mental and physical health benefits. Yeah, okay. So it's probably worth explaining me explaining a little bit about what you're doing specifically at the Five Ways Cafe at this point. So um, Cafe Meets, they have refreshments, um, there's a little bit of chit chat and then they go out on the guided walk around the park and it's, it's very gentle, it's very accessible, but you, you and your team, you're studying 
uh, sort of how regularly people come and um, what kind of things they're doing and what makes them go on the walk and why they wouldn't go on the walk, for example. Um, so it's been really fascinating so far to, to, to sort of learn about your observations. So we hope to do that a lot in the future. Um, Yikka and I have been working together for some time now to promote well-being into older people. Uh, and this is something that we're really enthusiastic about the Parks Trust. Um, we're always working to make the parks more accessible and engaging to everybody. Um, there's lots of ways for older people and people with dementia to enjoy our parks. For example, the best way probably is to join onto one of our discovery strolls, which is a walk designed for all abilities. Um, it takes you around lots of different parks. At each, each time you go, it's a different park. Um, you explore places that you might not have already visited by yourself. Um, so it's really, it's really engaging and you always learn something new. Um, you can also take note of our very detailed pre-visit information for every park that we have. Um, which helps you set up and prepare for your visit. So there's no surprises. Um, you can also go on one of our self-guided walks, which are downloadable from our website. So you just have to have a look in the walking section and you'll find them there and you can find something for your local park. Uh, and like I said, at Great Linford Manor Park, we're developing a mindfulness trail and some activity sheets, which will be available on the website as well to help older adults stay active and take notice of their surroundings. But Yitka, how can listeners find out more about you and your project? There are several ways. Uh, one, one of them is to Google my name, which doesn't come so easily, especially if we have to spell it out. But if you Google Jitka Žetečkova at Open University and look at my research profile and there are links to all projects and publications and all these are regularly updated. Amongst these projects and especially publications, there are quite a few that we have published as open learn articles, which means they're, pub they're public facing. They're not researchy, they're not research, typical research publications, but they're actually written in a way so that we engage more public because this is also one of the aims that was behind uh, creating the Aging Well uh, public talk series. It was creating bridges between what we do as researchers and mainly what we find and how we can share this with public because if the public understand what we have found out might be beneficial to slow down the aging processes for as much as we can, then the public is the first person, no, for, for, that they're the first who should know about that. So linking to my profile there are quite a few public facing open learn articles that uh, are written in a way that uh, are the, they're not meant to engage as the research community uh, another way is to look for the website www.keepmewalking.info which as you know relates to, to to the project we're working on together and um, uh, people can see the aims and objectives of the project, what we're trying to deliver upon and uh, the ways we are going about it. They can meet the Open University Research Team, they can meet the Parks Trust Team as well. And we regularly update the website with um, events that are happening or as, as, as it was during the lockdown, events that have been cancelled. Um, Another way is to perhaps contact me via email, which is jitka.przedeczkowa at open.ac.uk or uh, on social media, for example, Twitter at Jitka So there are there are several ways. There is also a possibility to just Google uh, Walking the Parks project with Parks Trust and Open University uh, and or uh, just typing Aging Well Public Talks because all these links are interlinked and will lead to one another uh, sooner or later so brilliant so easy to track down then well thank you so much for joining me today Yika. Uh, it's been really fun to chat to you and you're coming all the way from the german czech border so we've had a little bit of fun with the time difference but it's nice to see you in, uh, face to face i'm so excited to see how our project progresses if you've enjoyed listening to our podcast today please let us know uh, you can email us at glmp at theparkstrust.com, that's the Great Linford Manor Park project page, or you can contact us both with Yitka on social media or just contact the Parks Trust directly. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it today.